This series of videos will guide you with the skills needed for your RSL Music Production Grade 2 coursework task. This video will take you through setting up Cubase for working with loops and exploring the loop browser. Start a new empty project, select the project folder, and immediately save your project. Right click the ruler and change it to Bars and Beats, since that will be most useful for loop work. Also have Snap On with the grid visible and the grid type set to Bar. We will be using these settings later. The next step is to set the tempo for your track. Since we will keep the same tempo for the whole track, we can change the tempo in the transport to Fixed and then adjust the tempo. You may want to switch on the click and press play to hear the tempo. If the transport bar has disappeared, F2 will bring it back. Let's go and find some loops. Go to Media, Loop Browser. There are three useful panels. The middle panel is a list of all the loops that are available to you. Notice how there is a lot of information you can tell about each file. You can preview each loop in the Previewer panel. Select the loop and then press Play. One of the powerful features of the Previewer is this Align Beats to Project setting, which allows you to hear the loop as it will sound in your current tempo. So this upright bass is at 82.440 BPM, or beats per minute, but when the Align Beats is selected, it plays back at my project tempo of 136 BPM. To help you find the sound you want, you can filter this list. The first way to do that is in the Results panel. You can choose any combination of audio files, MIDI files, and the MIDI loops. Remember that MIDI is just note information that gets sent to whatever sound module you choose, but audio is whatever that person has recorded. The other great way to filter is to use the Filters panel at the top. Here you can select the library name if you need to, the style and the family name. So I'll choose Pop and Pacific Pool. This family of loops were designed with the same style, tempo and key, that is 119 BPM and D major. The names of the loops give us additional information, such as how the audio was recorded, DI or with a microphone, and if it would fit into a verse, fill, intro, chorus or bridge. These are labels of how they were created, but you could really use them wherever you want. Try not to get stuck using loops from just one family. Remember that the purpose of loops is to act as placeholders, so that you can get creating quickly, not to simply put together someone else's work. In the next video, we'll start adding loops to our project.